Good day, Grade 12s. We are now in the part of the academic year called the last push. Today we are going to master maths lit together. I am Miss Mathayan from Morningside High School in Port Elizabeth, and I will be taking you through the topic of taxation today. In mathematical literacy, specifically in Grade 12, there are two subtopics, being VAT, value added tax, and income tax. As I just mentioned, income tax will be the focus for today. Before we get into any calculations, let's recap what income tax is all about. So, what is income tax? Take a moment, think how you would answer this question in an exam. So, what is income tax? Income tax is a compulsory levy imposed by the government on our salaries as employees. How is income tax calculated? Income tax is calculated using formulas in a taxation table, which you should be familiar with by now. It uses your salary, any deductions like UIF and pension, as well as your age and medical aid contributions to calculate the tax, which we will get into later on. So where does tax go to? Does it just disappear? Does it end up in our pockets? No, it goes to SARS, the acronym S-A-R-S. -S. This is a common exam question where they will ask you which government institution collects tax. The answer would be SARS. You must know both the acronym and the full name, being the South African Revenue Services. So, why is income tax collected? There has to be a purpose for all this money to be collected. The schools that you are in, the teachers in front of you, for example, our salaries come from the government, which is generated from tax. Where do our hospitals get money for their staff and their facilities? From the government budget, which again comes from revenue from tax. So, just to illustrate what I was explaining, without income tax, we wouldn't be able to afford teachers, nurses, government employees, government facilities. Also, grants that many receive also come from employees' tax that then goes into the government's budget. So, some income tax stats for 2023-2024 financial year. SARS collected 2 trillion 155 billion rands worth of tax from employees in South Africa. And I estimated with that money roughly, you could give 2,011 loaves of bread to each person in our country with all that money. So, steps in income tax. You can either refer to them as steps or different aspects of income tax. The first one is annual gross income. Gross income is the opposite of net income, which you should be familiar with. Gross income is before deductions and net income is after deductions. We then have our annual taxable deductions. In previous years, this would be UIF and pension. But due to curriculum changes, this only includes pension. And pension is calculated at a percentage of 7,5%. Next is our annual taxable income. This is the income that SARS can tax you on after your deductions have been subtracted. We then have tax threshold. Remember, this is also vocabulary that they like to question you on. Your tax threshold is the minimum amount you must earn as an employee before you qualify to pay for tax. If you are under this threshold, you do not qualify to pay tax. Lucky you. Step five is tax brackets. This is where the calculations start becoming more complex and this tax bracket is provided by SARS themselves. Tax rebates. Normally in an income tax question, they will say, for example, Sia is 36 years old. Why would we need someone's age? It's a bit personal. 
But in income tax, age is important for the tax rebates. Rebates are good things. These are discounts on how much money we must pay over to SARS. Step seven would be medical credits. Just to be more specific, it has to be annual medical credits. If you look at the steps, annual is repeated over and over. We do not want to work with monthly values. Step eight is your annual tax payable. Annual meaning how much tax you would pay for an entire year. And lastly, step nine, monthly tax payable. By now, you should also know to get from annual to monthly, we always divide by 12. Why by 12? Because there are 12 months in a year. So just to clarify, not every exam question will require you to go through the full steps. For example, if the question said, determine C is annual taxable income, you would only use the first three steps. But if we said, Sia has medical aid for herself and her two children, determine her annual or monthly tax payable, you would go through the full list of steps. An important tip to remember. Remember we are doing mathematical literacy. Mathematical meaning numbers, literacy meaning words. Without the two working together, you cannot be successful in the subject. You can't be great with the numbers and neglect the vocabulary. So please make sure you understand all the vocabulary that I just listed in those nine steps. It will help you interpret questions better and that way you'll be more successful in the subject. So for today's short lesson, we will be perfecting steps one to three. Firstly, step one is calculating annual gross income. Just to highlight again, annual. We do not work with monthly values in income tax. That is why I've highlighted it in red. Step two, calculating annual pension contribution. That is where your 7,5% comes in. And then lastly, using step one and two to calculate annual taxable income. That is the value that you must have before you can go on to the tax brackets. So let's get into some practice because as we know, practice makes perfect. Let's get into our first worked example. Question one, Unam is a full-time IT technician and earns a monthly emphasis on monthly salary of 45,500 Rand and contributes each month to a pension fund. Determine his annual taxable income. So this question again only refers to our first three steps. So today I have given you the answers but I will be working through it with you. Step one, calculating the annual gross income or salary. To make anything monthly turn into annual, you times by 12. So we took his monthly salary, 45,500 Rand, and multiplied it by 12 to make it annual. So his annual earnings is 546,000 Rand. Step two, annual pension. I keep emphasizing annual. You take his annual income from step one, so everything follows on from each other. You take his 546,000 Rand that he earns for the year and multiply it by 7,5% because that is your pension contribution percentage. So for the year, Unam would contribute 40,950 Rand to his pension fund, which he would only have access to once he retires. Lastly, step three, annual taxable income. You take your answer from step one, and your answer from step two and always subtract. You only subtract in this part of the question. Please make sure the two values that you are subtracting are annual values. So Unam's annual taxable income would be 505,050 Rand. This has been Miss Methane with you today. If you want to master your future, master maths lists. 
Thank you.